Today, we're looking again at the relationship between percents and fractions. In this video, we'll give a bit of a recap. You'll learn to convert a fraction to a percent. You'll learn to read the words of a fraction as out of. You'll learn to do a one-step problem with fractions and percents, and you'll compare a percent to a whole. Let's get started. Remember that percent means out of 100. So when we, we express two-fifths as a percent, we start with two-fifths, then we use equivalent fractions to make it out of tenths. Notice how in our fraction square, we started with five equal parts, and each of those parts was subdivided into two, or we can think of it as multiplying the numerator and the denominator by two in the fraction to get four tenths. Next, we subdivided each of those pieces into ten rows, or we could think of it as multiplying the numerator and the denominator in the fraction by ten. So, in our final hundredth square, which has 100 equal sections, we can say that there are 40 shaded squares out of 100. Remember, each column is 10, so four columns is 40. So, 40 hundredths is how many percent? Well, because percent means out of 100, 40 out of 100 in a fraction is the same as 40 percent. Through this method going from left to right, we've realized that two fifths is the same as 40%. Let's try uh, to look at that again. Now you can see your answer there. We've got it, 40%. Now we want to try expressing each fraction as a percent, but this time we don't have the pictures to help us. So 9 twentieths. First, when we look at that uh, fraction, we need to think about if we have 9 for every 20, how many do we have out of 100? Well, to get from 20 to 100, I need to multiply by 5. So if I'm multiplying the denominator by 5, I'm also multiplying the numerator by 5. So I get 45 on top of 100, or 45 hundredths, which gives me 45%. In each of these examples, we're looking at the denominator first and seeing what multiplier we need to do to get the denominator to become 100. Then we're going to do the same thing to the numerator, and from that uh, product, we will get our percent. So we ask ourselves first, okay, we see four fifths. Well, in the last example with fifths, we started by converting it to tenths, and then it was easy to multiply by 10 to get 100. So four fifths is the same as eight tenths. Eight tenths, when we multiply by 10, we get 80 hundredths. So four fifths should be the same as 80%. We can do the same thing when the fraction has the denominator of 25. We're looking for what do we multiply 25 by to get 100? Well, 25, 50, 75, 100. Four 25s fit into 100, so we need to multiply 14 by 4. And here you can see all of that work worked out. I want you to notice that the numerator we end up with over 100 becomes our actual percent. Okay? Try not to get confused in problem B. Notice that we took two steps. We could have recognized that 5 times 20 gives us 100, and we could have gone straight to 4 times 20 gives us 80. But we were thinking through our mental math and connecting to the pictures we had just made. So that's why we took two steps. Now, I want you to learn a new way to read fractions. That first fraction you see, we've learned to say it 7 20 fifths. We always put that THS suffix on our denominator because it tells us what type of pieces we're working with in our whole. So we have seven selected out of 25 total pieces, so that's 7 25ths. But we can also say that fraction as 7 out of 25. Remember that numerator tells us how many we've selected, and the 25 tells us the total number of parts in one whole. So we're going to express 7 out of 25 as a percent. We write 7 out of 25 as 7 25ths, and then we do our same method, recognizing that 25 times 4 gives us 100, and we need to multiply by 4 on the top as well. Now, using that out of terminology helps us better apply percents to real-life problems. Let's look at one real-life problem. Tara has 20 apples. 14 of those apples are red apples. What percentage are red apples? Well, 14 out of the 20 apples she has 
are red apples. So we can say 14 twentieths of the apples are red apples. Now we use the same method we've learned before. 20 times 5 gives us 100. So we need to multiply the numerator by 5. So we have 70 out of 100, which means 70%. 70% of Tara's apples are red. Now, let's try to find something else. What percentage of the apples are not red? Now, some of you might want to jump in and say, 20 minus 14 is 6, so 6 of the apples are not red. Now, the cool thing about percents is that we don't actually have to go back to the same raw data numbers. We can use what we already know about percents. If 70% of the apples are red, the rest of the apples are not red. How many percentages are in the whole? Remember that percent means out of 100. So the whole amount of apples, the total amount, is 100% of the apples. If 70% are red, 30% are not red. Because 100, the whole amount, minus 70, gives us 30%. So whenever you find the percent of something, you can also find the percent that is not whatever characteristic you've come up with by subtracting from 100. Let's look at a new real life problem. Jane has 20 roses. She gives 13 of them to her friend. What percentage of the roses does she give away? Remember, she gives away 13 out of the 20 total roses she has. So we know 20 times five gives us 100. So we need to do 13 times five to find that missing numerator. That missing numerator, because it's over 100, will also tell us the percent. She gives away 65% of the roses. Now I want you to think on your own. If she gave away 65% of the roses, what percent of the roses did she not give away? Remember here, you've got to think about the whole, which is 100%, and subtract the part we already know to find the other missing part. Let's learn. Remember that we can read three-fourths as three out of four. Three-fourths of the sandwiches that Mrs. Gomez made were tuna sandwiches. What percentage were tuna sandwiches? What percentage were not tuna sandwiches? We're going to do that same process. We have three-fourths. We're multiplying it by 100%. Or we're thinking about four times what gives us 100? Four times 25. And then on the top, we're doing three times 25 because we always have to do the same thing to the top and the bottom of a fraction when making equivalent fractions. So 75 out of 100 is the same as 75%. 75% of the sandwiches were tuna sandwiches. So 100% minus 75%. We're doing 100% because one whole is the same as 100. When we take away the part we know, we can find that other part, which is the sandwiches that were not tuna sandwiches. So 25% of the sandwiches were not tuna sandwiches. Now I want you to work with me on this one. Seven, seven out of 25 children are boys. What percentage of the children are boys? What percentage of the children are not boys? Or in this case, the textbook will say girls. So first, we multiply using equivalent fractions to find the percentage of the children that are boys. We know 25 times 4 gives us 100. 7 times 4 gives us 28%. So 28% of the children are boys. Now, if we take away the amount that are boys, we should be able to find the children who are not boys. So 100 minus 28%. And you can see right here, 72% of those children are girls. I hope you followed along with that one. If you didn't, go back and try the problem on your own one more time. In this section, we have gone over how to convert a fraction to a percent using equivalent fractions. We're always looking at that denominator, finding the multiplier we need to get us to that fabulous 100 in our denominator. Once we have a fraction that's in terms of hundredths, we can easily take that numerator and turn that into a percent. We learn to read fractions with the term out of so that we can apply this abstract math concept to real life problems. We also learn to do one step word problems, changing fractions to percents, and we learn to compare a percentage to a whole. The whole is always 100%. So good luck, and I hope you get a 100% on today's classwork.